I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I'm pleased that you join us tonight. I'm really thrilled tonight to introduce to you uh, someone who would be on a very short list of anyone you'd ever mention about who's, who's left the church and challenged the Mormon teachings and doctrines of the church. So uh, tonight I'm thrilled to welcome Rowney Higley. Spend some time with us tonight and tell your story. Thank you. Yeah, it's nice to have you. you. And uh, I understand you were a convert to the church, is that right? Yes, tell, yes. Tell I'm, us about your conversion. Um, well, um, I, I grew up in, uh, I was born and raised in Finland. Yeah. And um, uh, now looking back at my life, uh, you know, I had a very sad childhood. Oh. Um, because my, uh, well, it was right after the war and my uh, mother died when I was uh, 11. Wow. And my father passed away when I had just turned 17. Oh my goodness. And uh, both of my grandmothers died before I was 18. So uh, wow. I didn't have, and I was an only child, so I didn't have oh, a family. Oh. So it was, uh, in that way, I, I was very um, sad and lonely. Um, but um, and now looking back, yeah. Uh, you know, I definitely was lost because I didn't grow up in a religious family. My parents uh, didn't go to church. Um, oh, there was didn't? There, no. What I never. What religion are they? Uh, were Lutheran. They? You know, uh, uh, ninety-three percent of the people in Finland are Lutheran, yeah. so you're automatically Lutheran yeah. unless you choose otherwise. <laughs> and there's not very many uh, things. But the Mormonism was fairly new uh, religion in in Finland and. Yeah. And, uh, and I was totally lacking in a biblical uh, knowledge. <laughs> I didn't know. Um, I had never seen an open Bible in my home. Nobody read the Bible, and so I, I didn't know that much. The only thing I knew about the Bible was what I learned in a, a, a school because it is a Lutheran a church yeah. is a state religion, so they require religious teaching, but it wasn't about uh, God, Jesus, and salvation. It was about the religious history mainly. Oh, so there and really wasn't much. It was even though religious. it was taught by yeah. the by the a priest or a yeah. pastor. Wow. And so, it was the biblical illiteracy that causes me to get attracted to Mormonism, <laughs> um, and basically. It was because I was, I, everybody in my family was dead, that I met a young lady yeah. who was about the same age that I was. It was a few years after my father had passed away. I met her, and when she learned that everybody in my family was dead, she said, oh, this is wonderful. Now you can, you can oh, uh, become a Mormon, yeah. and you can do the temple work for them. You can do the genealogy work and the temple work, and you can get sealed to uh, your parents, and you can have your whole family yeah. uh, back. And I, that I really spoke to that you. Was, yeah. That was really what um, converted me, even before I started talking to missionaries. Uh, that was 
because what I wanted is to have wow. a family. And like you say, you didn't really understand the Bible or no, anything. No, I so didn't this know. Really, mm -mm. families can be together no. forever. So right. Yeah. But you know, now looking back, I know that I I was lost, but I wasn't lost to God. All these things I have now looked at work for my good, uh, because uh, you know. God trained me through God the watching. testing and trials and sadness and heartbreak wow. to, um, you know, now I see how they yeah. fit into the picture. That's a great attitude. Uh, because, <laughs> you know, I look at some of the my uh, school time friends in yeah. Finland that had parents, had grandparents, had good family life, had everything, but they are not believers in Christ Jesus or the Bible now, Even like still. I am. Oh, no, my. you know, and so I look at that. They have a good life. They have had a good life, yeah. um, uh, earthly life. Right. But they haven't had a reason to seek God. Wow. I had a reason to really want to know God. I, of course, I went to the wrong direction when I <laughs> uh, joined the Mormon Church. But even that. I believe, His, uh, you know, worked God for God's yeah. uh, purposes. Wow. And uh, so here I am. Yeah. <laughs> well, it wasn't long after you were converted to the church that they actually called you on a mission, right? Oh, yes. I, I only had been a member nine months. Yeah. Uh, but I was so excited about the thing that I can, I can do the uh, uh, those genealogy sheets, get yeah. uh, the four generation sheets at least ready and uh, take them to the temple and have yeah. all that done. And I was so excited about what Mormonism offered to me personally that way wow. that a mission president had heard about this young lady who's just so on fire, uh, on fire <laughs> for the Mormon church. And so yeah. he, he came and talked to me and uh, called me on a mission, and I only had been a member for wow. nine months. And of course, I couldn't go to the temple right away, and of course, there wasn't a temple in Finland anyway. Yeah. The uh, closest temple was in Switzerland, and yeah. and when he called me on a mission, he said that, that they were planning um, on a temple trip in the following uh, January, which was like about five months uh, away, four months away. and. He said, well, then, you know, you can have all those um, uh, paperwork there in the all Swiss the, temple and the whole mission is going to go there and we're all, all going to do all the missionaries, 120 the missionaries. Wow. That's uh, unusual, isn't it? It was yeah. very unusual. And, and uh, it, this this was the second and the last time that the mission president was allowed to do that because they thought, oh, what if the plane crashed and every missionary, you know, because there's always a, be a, 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 you know, the older companion that knows the uh, language and, right. you know, it was, it yeah. was very difficult, would have been very difficult to start from a scratch. Oh, I'll say. Yeah. Well, so did you, you feel like you learned a lot about Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon through your mission and during this conversion time? Well, actually, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know how the um, missionary lessons, they are pretty much, uh, you know, the kind of a package deal. You know, when you don't, when you're not biblical Christian and you don't know the Bible, you don't know what questions to ask. Yeah. Um, you're and just so being taught, you, right? you're being taught, yeah. and you, you know, I reasoned within myself. I thought, well, they must believe this so genuinely because why would they come across the ocean, clear the other side of the world to teach something if it wasn't true? Uh, I did um, um, wonder about the cold plates, you know. The, you know, I asked them, you know, well, where, where are, are they? they? Yeah. Where are they? They said that the angel took them away. And oh. I said, why? They said, because they were sacred. And I said, if they can have the text, what the cold plates said, it, didn't, it only leaves the gold itself as sacred. If you can get the text out of it, then publish that to oh, the world. Good point. So, um, <laughs> uh, you know, so that was a question they didn't answer me satisfactory, but, uh, <laughs> but that's what they uh, said to me. And then when they, uh, the, uh, many of the missionaries in Finland at that time, they were carrying the picture books uh, that had um, 
supposedly archaeological proof for the Book of Mormon. They were oh. they were um, Mayan type Mayan stuff. type of you mm. know the uh, books that uh, had. Um, uh, Aztecs, Mayan temples, and so forth, and they were implying that those were all proof for the Book of Mormon. So, wow. so that's how you know. I thought, well, then it must be must be, must true. be true. And so, um, yeah. So those were the only questions that I basically can remember asking <laughs> was about the gold about plates. the gold plates and, and well, where are they? Now, your husband uh, we'll meet next week, Dennis Higley. Um, was also a missionary in Finland. Yeah, he was and at the same you time. Did, I guess you knew each other there, but you actually came now eventually to Salt Lake, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we knew each other. Um, I had converted before um, before I met him. I was sure. already a member. Um, and we, as a, uh, as a missionaries, we served in uh, four or five, I think, four or five cities oh, at the did? same time okay. that we when uh, he got transferred I got transferred so it was like the Lord we, was bringing you yeah, together and huh? and I can't think of any other missionary that I served in a more than one place at yeah. the same time so we became very good friends we were yeah. um, you know because we had our weekly missionary meetings and everything together and we usually in the same city we uh, had uh, lunch or dinner yeah. at the same uh, cafe yeah. <laughs> you know so we we knew each other quite well and we were good friends and then uh, after my mission I uh, came to um, I didn't have any reason to stay in Finland there was no family oh sure and so I um, came to Salt Lake and the Mormon Church hired me uh, immediately to work as a translator and interpreter um, full-time oh, for the Finnish language for the Finnish course. language and so and what kind I, of work did you do uh, uh, lesson manuals conferences general correspondence conference, general conferences okay. uh, uh, I even translated the temple ceremony um, into Finnish, uh, into Finnish. Oh. Uh, it was it was a full-time work um, and uh, because my background didn't include uh, lots of Mormon studies, except what the missionaries right. have, which is very minimal. Um, uh, you know, that uh, work provided me with the uh, resources to uh, to study the history of the Mormon church. And of course, oh, uh, you know, I, yeah, well, stuff, yeah. Uh, you know, in, a, in almost in any manual that you translate, it's a, whether it's priesthood manual, Relief Society, whatever it is, they always quote uh, earlier leaders, sure, you know, yeah. and and it's uh, taken from some uh, book or some, you know. So sure. I I some went quote. always to the source to read the whole thing so that I would understand what they were trying to say, so that I would uh, definitely understand the context wow. where this quote came from. So really? And that's how I started learning the different Mormonism that I had known as a missionary, uh, and uh, seeing that the doctrines had been changed from what it was at the beginning. Uh, that the uh, beginning, Joseph Smith thought that God the Father is a spirit. That's what the yeah. Book of Mormon teaches. That's what the Doctrine and Covenants from 1835, five years after the Church, uh, that teaches that God the Father is a spirit and only the Son has a body of flesh and bones. Yeah, the lectures of Yeah, of the faith. lectures of faith. That was the actually the theology portion of the Doctrine and Covenants. Doctrine was, and doc Covenants. Doctrine <laughs> and Covenants was two-part book. It, yeah. The f section one was a theology and the section two was the revelation. So you started covenants. seeing some of these discrepancies. Yeah, I started to see, hey, wait a minute. Uh, this was not the doctrine from the beginning, yeah. and uh, you know those, and then going through all the uh, Adam God and yeah. blood atonements and all the other doctrines that I, wow. uh, was revealed in the in the sermons of the especially Brigham Young and, and yeah. the others. Now, two. were you married at this point? You uh, uh, shortly after, um, uh, you know, yeah, when. Uh, after Dennis finished his mission, he still had a couple of months left because at that time the mission was two and a half sure. years. Um, and so after he came back, and I was already here no. in Salt Lake, and so um, 
uh, he wanted to ask me out, yeah. <laughs> you know, because we were good friends already. Yeah. So uh, it didn't take very long, you know, after, <laughs> after that, that we um, fell in love with each other and we were married in a Salt Lake Temple. Wow. And then, and so you're a, me and what did you, you'd been through the temple, I guess, in Switzerland. Uh, oh, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. So now you um, are translating and you're finding these discrepancies. Did you ever bring these to anybody's attention oh, in yes, the church? Oh, uh, yes, I tried to, I tried to. And you didn't uh, get any good answers, uh, I guess. No, no, it was, it was always, the uh, um, answer was just translate as it is. Um, Don't look at the other stuff. You know, stuff. I, I remember even uh, even about the temple ceremony because there's a lot of uh, things in that that is very was very difficult to translate. Exactly, uh, first of all, because we had to time it to the film, oh, so sure. it had to um, the yeah. timing. And you know, I I asked a lot of questions, but there were no answers. Oh dear! And how long did you work for the church? Uh, over fourteen years. Wow. Yeah. And I know you've gathered a, gr a great library. I've seen your library. Yes, yeah, amazing. we have literally hundreds of, you know, um, but because a part of my, last part of my working for the church, we had moved to Vernal, Utah, mm. and I thought that I had to stop working for the church, but the church says, no, you can still work, you, you know, and that's how I started collecting a lot of the oh. older books so that I had mm. them handy, and then I just came here when it was necessary in the conference times um, I came, but otherwise I translated at home yeah. And just, um, I had a lady that was typing everything for me wow. and finished. So. Well, now, do you, um, as you kept studying and studying, did it start bothering you more and more, these discrepancies? Yes. Are these it, the things that kind of led you to question the church? Uh, well, I was, I started questioning the church fairly early, but I didn't have anywhere to, uh, to go after that. Yeah. You know, it was... Um, See, I thought, well, I didn't learn anything uh, in a Lutheran church, being yeah. a member of the Lutheran right. church. I didn't learn anything there. I didn't know where, what, it, I had bought totally the idea that the Mormon church is the only true church. And I had so been so converted to that and to the temple work for my parents and grandparents and relatives and so forth that I thought, if this is not true, then what is? And then it uh, really hurt my heart to think that then, if this is not true, then all that I have done for my parents, the temple ceilings, the marriages, that, that was all anything. for nothing. And so, so really hard, that, was, that was the hardest part, was to think if this is not true, then I don't have a family. Uh, waiting for me in the, in the heavenly kingdom. Yeah. I, there was nothing then. And so I tried very hard to justify any of these doctrines that somehow it has to add, add up. Somehow it has to be still true. So, uh, you know, all those 14 years that I worked for the church, I struggled with that and tried to talk to the leaders, uh, you know, but they didn't provide any any uh, answers? Well, I know that you undertook a satisfied. deep study. Oh, that's yeah. And that and so did it. So what happens eventually? It, it's just eventually, finally, it just got to the point that it's kind of like the old saying that you pile uh, these things on a, a camel's back, and the last little one, a little yeah. <laughs> string is the thing that one. breaks the back. You know, I had been piling these things in my mind and heart, and you know, and some people call it putting it on a shelf, yeah. you know, uh, that finally it just broke to the point and I, I thought, you know, this is just, it can't be explained away. Wow. Uh, it simply cannot be explained away and I had to face that it's not true. But then my first uh, inclination then was if this is not true, mm -hmm. then there is no truth about God. So there, how, did, how did you bridge that to Christianity? Um, <laughs> well, it, it started, um, we had, uh, in Vernal, we had a, we had a couple of, three, actually three businesses that, my, uh, that we had um, at that time, and we had a retail business uh, that my husband was running, and, uh, and we had a lady working for us in that business that 
we always had thought that she was LDS. She had moved from <laughs> Colville to Vernal, and yeah. and um, and uh, we thought she was. She had been a Relief Society president. She had been all kinds of leadership positions as uh, as a woman in teaching and so oh, forth. Wow. And so she. Um, uh, one day, she, I stopped by the store, you know, to talk to Dennis, and so this Linda came and she said, oh, what are you doing now in the church? Because she knew that I had been in a stake release society board while Dennis was in a high council. And, and he, um, she asked me, what are you doing in a church now? And I says, Linda, I don't go to church anymore. I don't believe it's true. I, I have stopped taking the, uh, going there. The Dennis and the, and our children are going, but I'm not. And a few days later, she came knocking on my door and she said, she said, I have these Bible study tapes. They are about the Gospel of John by Jack Missler. They surprise you? <laughs> uh, yeah. Would you like to listen to those? Actually, my first. Uh, inclination was no but I but she's such a nice lady she was yeah. just kind and nice and and so I ended up saying okay I will listen to them yeah. and a couple of weeks went by and then I um, thought well she's gonna ask me yeah. if I if yeah. I listen to some I turned I was doing some housework and I thought well I'll turn them on and so well I'm working here <laughs> yeah and uh, and uh, he said something right very sh beginning of the, of the, that I uh, had never heard anything like that before. I, I stopped the tape, rewound it, sat down, took the Bible. Actually, it was my quadruple combination Bible. I took, uh, took the Bible and started uh, following what he was saying. And it was, it's just like a light came on. <laughs> Isn't that joyful? Yeah. Oh, and you know, and I got so excited, and through those, um, uh, you know, there were, uh, she only had two, uh, three tapes, but then I ended up ordering the rest <laughs> for the address, and uh, there were 22 90-minute tapes on the Gospel of John. Wow. And that was absolutely incredibly wonderful. I learned who Jesus is. That he's not my brother. He's no, my God. <laughs> he's our God. Yeah, he? and I I learned uh, so much uh, about who God is, the Triune God of the Bible. That um, uh, you know, I I went um, you know before I was even at the end of the uh, studies, I went on my face and asked the Lord to save me and come to my heart and life and and uh, forgive me for, for worshiping a false god for. 20 yeah. years and so and isn't it just amazing that you we're we've both been LDS for so long and that message never came through did it about Jesus uh, well because we were we were taught that Jesus is a created being as yeah. we were in a pre-existent he was yeah. our brother and we had the same not beginning as he God. did yeah uh, and so uh, you know amazing. that's not Jesus that the Bible teaches oh. he's God who became a man uh, just to save us, yeah. you know, because he loved us so. Had you ever heard about grace before in the Mormon uh, Church? Uh, you know, grace was just something that uh, God adds to it if we have done everything um, <laughs> ourselves. You know, uh, like, yeah. the, like the uh, second in, in Nephi, or second Nephi uh, like, 25, 23, this yeah. says, uh, you know, that we're saved by grace after all we can do. And, and yeah. I, I always remember that part, of, part from the temple where the, the devil actually says, if you, you know, if you don't walk up to everything that is being taught here in the temple, I'm paraphrasing, yeah. uh, then um, you will be in my power. Yeah. And I thought, nobody can ever say they have uh, done everything that they start in the temple when they hold up the yeah. scriptures and yeah. and everything and they say okay this is what you have to a covenant that you wow. obey and and so forth so well, anyway Randy, that's it <laughs> you Randy, you have such wonderful insights and you've had such an experience translating and so on um, what do you, what do you tell the LDS people what would you say to them about uh, searching and looking and, and not being afraid? Or? Uh, our uh, challenge, we have been uh, doing some classes on uh, teaching people how to witness the Mormons, and we started with, who is God? You know, I have to say, you know, 
is the God of Mormonism same as God of the Bible? Yeah. Because if you have a false God, you can never have a salvation. False God cannot provide that. So we start with uh, who God is and who Jesus is, and the Bible teaches that. Let me just say, too, that this has been going on for 32 years, uh, this, this adventure of Rowney since the... Uh, since your conversion or coming out of the church, you and your husband have had, and we, I think we've put your website on the on the screen as well so people can contact you, but you've done sure. courses here in Salt Lake and throughout the country, haven't you? Yes, we have We have traveled across the country many times. Um, we, were, we did uh, work for many, many years with the Southern Baptist Convention. We even had an opportunity, which was scary to me, to speak at the Southern Baptist Convention that was held here in Salt Lake in wow. 1998. Wow. And, uh, you know, that was scary because there were 15,000 people in, in, a, um, uh, in Salt Palace. And did Listen. you teach them about Mormonism? Or well, I, I, just, I just mainly, uh, I was, uh, it was fairly brief um, teaching, but it was mainly how I converted to Mormonism and, and uh, then realized that it was not uh, the biblical gospel. It was, a, wow. uh, it was Mormonism teaches another Jesus, another gospel, and yeah. has another spirit. So, so, so in answer to the question, what you'd tell the LDS is to, and you mentioned about G Jesus being somebody different than we had learned. Right. In, in anything else? That it you? is. It is the biblical study. It's not just reading here and there, but take a complete study of each book at a time, and starting with the Gospel of John. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, you said that Chuck Missler was twenty-two. Tapes or twenty-two ninety-minute tapes was <coughs> that's that was the <coughs> that's studying <coughs> the Bible. <coughs> yeah, that was the BC era. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, be, before the computers. Yeah. you know, and so uh, now we have uh, we offer those to people that are serious about learning who Jesus is as an MP3 yeah. uh, study, and but that is like a thirty-six hours is. Wow. That it takes to go to the well, they've, gospel. They've yeah. also written a book called The Truth About Mormonism. It's a wonderful read. It tells a little of their story and also some of these things that are included in the in the course. Rowney, our time's up. You've, Thank uh, you. I really appreciate your story and, and it's so so wonderful to, to have you share this because I think there are new people coming out of the church or at least questioning some of the things of the church and realize that there are people that have actually done some serious study mm -hmm. and actually studied themselves out of the church because right. of the conflicts and yeah. contradictions in doctrine and teachings. Yeah, so we have been teaching it. these classes at Calvary Chapel since, okay. uh, you know, this is our 12th year starting. So, so go to the website and check it out and appreciate you so much, Ronnie. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Thanks you. for joining us. Good night.